Hello, dear students. Myself, Mrs. Rajeshri Naik from BYK College of Commerce, Nasi, working as a teacher of economics, welcomes you on our online lecture series for Standard 11th, arranged by Gokhale Education Society, Nasi. Today, we are going to start with the first online lecture on chapter number one, Basic Concepts in Economics. Content of today's presentation is Introduction, Meaning of Economics, Kautilya's Views on Economics, Definitions of Economics in that Adam Smith's Wealth-Oriented Definition of Economics. In your textbook, total three popular definitions are there. Out of three, in this lecture, we are going to study the first Adam Smith's definition of economics. Now, we are going to start our lecture with introduction part of chapter one. Today's word is marked by scientific inventions and discovery. This remarkable scientific progress enables to probe into the question, what is a science? Science is the systematic body of knowledge. There are two main types of sciences. First one, natural sciences and second, social sciences. All of you know very well that today's world is known by many scientific innovations and discoveries. Immense progress in scientific fields develops a question that is what is a science? Science is systematic body of knowledge. There are two main types of sciences, just I said natural sciences and social sciences. Now, what do you mean by natural sciences and social sciences? Natural science is one whose laws are universally acceptable and their validity can be tested in laboratory under control conditions. Natural science is one whose laws are universally acceptable and their validity can be tested in laboratory under control conditions. Natural sciences are also called exact sciences because of their empirical approach to the study. For example, mathematics, physics, chemistry, etc. Empirical approach means it is an evidence-based approach that relies on real world data to study and interpret information. Now, the meaning of social sciences. Social science is called abstract or behavioral science. Social science is called abstract or behavioral science because it is related to the study of some or the other aspect of human behavior. For example, psychology is related to mental aspect of human behavior. Sociology is related to the study of social aspect of man as a member of society. Human behavior can neither be empirically tested nor can be studied in the laboratory. Hence, the laws of social sciences are not universal, but they are only statements of general human tendencies. Let us see the meaning of economics. Economics is a social science. The origin of the term economics lies in the Greek word okonomia, which means management of the household. Economics is referred to as Queen of Social Sciences by Paul Samuelson. Economics deals with the economic aspect of human behavior. It deals with how human beings satisfy unlimited wants with limited means. It deals with how human beings satisfy unlimited wants with limited means. Here, economic aspect means income level of the human being. And Limited means limited resources. In a simple language, we can say that resources are limited and wants are unlimited and we have to deal with them successfully. In a simple language, we can say that resources are limited, wants are unlimited and we have to deal with them successfully and identify which wants are necessary which can give us a satisfaction, which can give us happiness, 
and if we are successful in dealing with such situation then we will get maximum satisfaction let us understand the nature of economics with respect to some popular definitions kautilya's views on economics before going to study about kautilya's views on economics it is very much important to know about kautilya kautilya was a great statesman philosopher economist and royal advisor during the maurya period he is also known by the name chanakya or vishnu gupta kautilya authored the ancient indian political treatise the arthashastra and now his views on economics artha means wealth and shastra means science artha shastra implies the science of acquiring and managing wealth essentially artha shastra is a treatise on political economy in its broadest sense now what do you mean by treatise treatise is defined as a written work dealing formally and systematically with a subject let us see the key points of kautilya's definition number 1 crucial role of the state or government second focus on creation of wealth as a means to ensure welfare of the state three need for efficient administrative machinery for good governance and four compilation of political ideas into arthashastra now let us see the key points in detail number 1 crucial role of the state of government kautilya's principles serve as guidelines for many economically activities through time kautilya was a great proponent of the notion that the state or government has a crucial role to play in maintaining the material well-being of the people in a nation kautilya was a great proponent of the notion that the state or government has a crucial role to play in maintaining the material well being of the people in a nation the whole economic policy was regulated and controlled by the state second key point focus on creation of wealth as a means to ensure wealth of the state kautilya's arthashastra focus on creation of wealth as a means to ensure the well being of the state a perfect balance had to be maintained between state management and people's welfare and this was the essence of kautilya's economic treatise arthashastra the state accumulated wealth by generating resources in the form of grains cattle gold forest produce trade and labor now third key point need for efficient administrative machinery for good governance kautilya's book arthashastra sets the conceptual groundwork for making india the first welfare state according to kautilya to ensure good governance there must be a properly guided public administration where the ruler should surrender his likes and dislikes in the interest of his subjects and the personnel running the government should be responsive and responsible kautilya further emphasized that for citizen friendly good governance there should be uniformity in the administrative practices as well as competent ministers and officials and they possessing the qualities of leadership accountability intellect energy good moral conduct and physical fitness capable of taking prompt decisions etc now for key point compilation of political ideas into arthashastra kautilya compiled his political ideas into arthashastra one of the world's earliest treatise on political thought and social order it set forth ideas of state graft and moderatism and also a code of civil and criminal law kautilya's arthashastra is mainly a work on the art of government kautilya's arthashastra is mainly a work on the art of government the gist of the above key points of kautilya's definition is the state has to promote the economic welfare of the people and fully regulate its economic life 
the state had to give subsidies for the development of trade agriculture irrigation mines cattle welfare etc let us see some popular definitions of economics adam smith wealth oriented definition of economics classical economist adam smith also regarded as the father of economics he has given the wealth oriented definition of economics out of his many literary contributions to economics he is most famous for his 1776 piece of work an inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth of nations adam smith defines economics as a science of wealth adam smith defines economics as a science of wealth let us see the key points of adam smith's definition first key point legislature that is non intervention of the government second capital and wealth accumulation third nature's law in economic affairs and fourth division of labor as an aspect of growth theory now see the key points in detail legislature that is non intervention of the government adam smith was a major proponent of legislature economic policies in his first book the theory of moral sentiments smith proposed the idea of an invisible hand the tendency of free markets to regulate themselves by means of competition supply and demand and self interest adam smith's theory is based on the principle of legislature which requires that state should not impose any restriction on freedom of an individual legislature which requires that state should not impose any restriction on freedom of an individual the policy of legislature allows the producers to produce as much as they like earn as much income as they can and save as much they like now second key point capital and wealth accumulation it is the pivot around which the theory of economic development revolves the growth is functionally related to rate of investment according to smith any increase in capital stock in a country generally leads to more than proportionate increase in output on account of continually growing division of labor any increase in capital stock in a country generally leads to more than proportionate increase in output on account of continually growing division of labor in the ordinary language by wealth we mean money but in economics wealth refers to those goods which satisfy human wants in economics wealth refers to those goods which satisfy human wants capital accumulation involves the creation of more capital goods for example building equipments tools machinery and vehicle these are known as capital goods it is also known as capital formation now third key point nature's law in economic affairs adam smith proposes natural law in economic affairs he advocated the philosophy of free and independent action if every individual member of society is left to choose his economic activity he will maximize the output to the best of his ability he opines that natural laws are superior to law of states statutory law or man made law can never be perfect and beneficial for the society that is why adam smith respects nature's law because nature is just and moral nature teaches man the lesson of morality and honesty these exercises favorable effects on the economic progress of society and last key point of adam smith definition division of labor as an aspect of growth theory the rate of economic growth is determined by the size of productive labor and productivity of labor the rate of economic growth is determined by the size of productive labor and productivity of labor the productivity of labor depends upon technological progress of a country 
and which in turn depends upon the division of labor division of labor increases the productivity of labor through specialization of tasks when a work is subdivided into various parts and the worker is asked to perform small parts of whole job his efficiency increases as now he can focus his attention more carefully when a work is sub divided into various parts and the worker is asked to perform small parts of whole job his efficiency increases as now he can focus his attention more carefully adam smith in his book wealth of nations pointed out three benefits of division of labor three benefits of division of labor first benefit increase of skill in performing task of workers increase of skill in performing task of workers second benefit saving time required to produce commodity saving time required to produce commodity third benefit invention of better machines and equipments invention of better machines and equipments so in today's lecture we have covered introduction part of chapter 1 meaning of economics kautilya's views on economics and adam smith's wealth oriented definition of economics that's it in the next online lecture video we will go with professor alfred marshall's welfare oriented definition of economics and leonel robbins scarcity oriented definition of economics till then have a great time Thanking you